Welcome back to EC 501B. At the request of some of your classmates, they were hoping I could extend the deadline for homework number four. If you've already turned that in, you can resubmit. If you thought about it more or wanted to add more, we'll try to grade your most recent submission. I apologize for not getting those graded, all of these homeworks. I having a hard time identifying a grader, so I may start grading this weekend to get some of that returned to you so that you can at least know more than just what you've done on the exam. And I think I still need to post your exam scores now that I say that. Homework 5 should be coming soon. And now what we want to do is begin... Uh-oh chapter 6 material. And chapter 6 is dealing with inner product spaces, which really means we're now adding an additional level of complexity or usefulness to all of these concepts. We started with the very basics of vector space, then we started looking at finite dimensional vector spaces, which allowed us to do dimensions and range space, null space. Then we started looking at restricting that to operators. We now have eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now we're going a next, the next step, which is to introduce an inner product on these spaces so that we will now have inner product spaces. And an inner product now allows us to talk about a length or angles, closeness, and how far away things might be in terms of distance and angle. We'll define the properties of an inner product, and as I said, combining that and inner product, I shouldn't say that, there's all types of inner products, and we can have those on polynomials. It's not just vectors with inner products the way that we're used to thinking about those. And we'll look at some examples of those. We'll talk about orthogonality, the Pythagorean theorem. Now you thought that was your elementary school material. Now we can talk about that in more than just a two-dimensional triangle. We can think of that in a more general sense. The orthogonal decomposition. Now we can decompose these vectors, and vectors are now in quotes, but you can think of those in the traditional way, but you can also have orthogonality based on some inner product that you might not have thought about before. Then we will have the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which now allows us to have an angle between these vectors, and that's associated with an inner product. And then, again, this sort of two-dimensional idea of a triangle inequality, we can generalize to these inner product spaces. That's where we are hoping to go. Let's now get into Chapter 6, which is entitled The Inner Product Spaces, which... These inner product spaces, or an inner product now, provide our vector spaces with the concepts of length. terms of length and angle, you could say now we have a way of keeping track of distances and closeness of these vectors. And again, vectors are the generic vector. It's not these long, tall things. We can have many different kinds of vectors, and they can then create a vector space with those vectors. Let's now look at a definition or a rule 
that we can then use to define an inner product. And with this rule, it better default to what you're used to thinking about an inner product. The inner product will be something that is defined between two vectors, let's say V and W, which now belong to this vector space V. Let's just establish notation and say it's written inside these angle brackets. So now when we see U and W in this order, order is important, inside these angle brackets, that means we are using some inner product. And we don't necessarily even have to define a specific inner product. It depends on what we're doing or what we're looking at. That's now the symbol that we will use. An inner product is a rule that now takes an ordered pair, that's where the ordering is important, an ordered pair of vectors I guess I should keep with the right vectors. I was starting with V and W. Let me go ahead and say there's an ordered pair of vectors V and W. It takes those two vectors in that ordered manner, V and W, to a scalar, which will be this angle bracket VW, close the angle bracket, where the scalar belongs to our field of numbers, whatever field we are using. And typically it's real or complex. So we can take a pair of vectors and boom, the inner product is going to give us a scalar associated with those two vectors in this ordered manner, V, W. Now, the inner product needs to have some properties. First, we want the inner product to satisfy a positivity property, which means that if you take the inner product of a vector with itself, now it's V inner product with V, that needs to be non-negative, greater than or equal to zero for all vectors in your vector space. That's one property we want the inner product to have. It has to have some definiteness to it. By that we mean if it turns out that the inner product of V with itself is equal to zero, that's only going to happen when the vector is the zero element. We have positivity, definiteness, then we have something that we will call additivity in the first slot. 